Special needs families need a congregation to welcome them when they walk in the door. We had a meeting talking to some parents about what it was that, that they actually needed. And they said that once their children graduated, they completely lost their social circles, they lost their therapies, they lost everything that was their day-to-day -day routine and all the ways that they could interact with people. And they started sitting at home alone while parents were at work. We started a weekday ministry where adults could come and socialize. We want adults to find their spiritual gifts, no matter their disability, and be able to use those in the community. So um, we've done a lot of different things like raising money and raising different items for places like the homeless shelter and kids in need and kids in foster care and, and things like that that our guys can use their gifts and talents. So. Um, we needed a name, and the story we went to was um, in 2 Samuel chapter 9. Jonathan had a son who had been handicapped and couldn't walk, named Mephibosheth. King David promised Mephibosheth that they would plow his fields for him, and he would always have a seat at the king's table. And so that was David's promise to Mephibosheth and to Jonathan, and so that's how we came up with our name, David's Promise. I always tell people that if you come to David's Promise, you will get to see a really good model of what I think the first century church was supposed to be. And one example I think of is we had a gentleman and his mom join us a couple years ago. And his mom shared with me that his dad had just passed away and it was just the two of them. Just like our group always does, they came in and everybody hugged him and said, oh, we're so glad you're here and stuff. And, and afterward, after our two and a half hour program, I came up to him and I said, do you think that you guys would like to come back? And he said, we haven't had very much family and we've lost a lot of our family and you guys are my new family after one time coming. And I just thought, this is what church is supposed to be and this is what our faith is supposed to be. I just thought, we've put in as volunteers and staff so much time into hoping we can make these connections and everything, and they don't need us for these connections. We're the ones learning so much about how to love Jesus because they just know how to do it and they know how to love each other. And it was a beautiful moment for us to see that um, we're the ones learning a lot from this group of people rather than thinking that we can teach them something. <laughs>